Welcome back, Flare community. Today, we're going to cover some recent news from Trustline, a credit network which is going to be based on Flare, Songbird, and also the XRP Ledger, a very complicated system, but something that I'm extremely excited about. So if we go over to the Trustline um, Twitter account, we can see here that they've done a recent announcement regarding fee, PHI. And this is going to be a new stablecoin issued on the XRP ledger, and it's going to be akin to Ore. So it's basically like Songbird has fee, and the Flare network will have Ore. Now we've talked about these before. If you haven't watched the video linked above, please feel free to do so to get a good understanding of what the Trustline credit network actually is. So let's jump in. Introducing fee on Songbird and the XRP Ledger. Fee is a Songbird version of RA. We are creating the coin to distinguish it from RA on the Flare network, since they will both be tradable on the XRP Ledger's decentralized exchange and will likely trade at different prices. Fee is the experimental prototype of RA. Its name originates from the first currency of the modern Greek state. The name was that of the mythical phoenix bird, which was meant to symbolize the rebirth of Greece during the still ongoing Greek War of Independence. But that's not all. The phoenix motive shows up in the 1988 cover story in The Economist titled Get Ready for the Phoenix. Now I'm sure many people have actually seen this. Uh, it's been going around like crazy in the XRP community for quite some time now. The article discusses the idea of a world currency that is free from currency exchange rate instability and resulting economic turmoil. The author predicts the use of an international currency alongside national currency and the world is better for it. Fee represents the rebirth of currency in the digital form. The Greek letter also represents the golden ratio. Now, for those of you who don't actually know what the golden ratio is, it's very interesting actually, I find this really interesting and it's, it's a natural occurring pattern and it can be seen all throughout nature in all kinds of different things. Uh, some of you may be familiar with uh, Fibonacci, uh, the Fibonacci sequence, and that's basically to do with this, the golden ratio. Now you see like uh, patterns like this, it's basically also seen in things like um, sunflowers. And what else do we have here? This spiral you might have seen, and I believe like tornadoes and um, uh, yeah, tornadoes. Sorry, they actually have this uh, particular pattern and galaxies. It's really interesting, and um, yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you. There you go. Look, a little shell. So let's go back to the article. Um, where are we? Here we go. As previously mentioned, both Phi and RA will be represented on the XRP ledger as trustless tokens. Both coins are transferable to the XRP ledger from their originating networks, either Songbird or Flur, via the Solaris Bridge. Now, we covered the Solaris Bridge in a live stream uh, maybe about a week ago, so be sure to check that out too. It's basically a connection from one network, say Songbird or Flur, onto the XRP ledger and allows either Phi or RA to be trustlessly minted via smart contracts. A natural consequence of their coexistence on the XRP ledger is the conversion rate between them. The goal is to maintain a one-to-one -one ratio unless Phi moves from a pegged stablecoin to an unpegged stablecoin. If governance implements Phi as an unpegged stablecoin, then the conversion rate will float with respect to RA. That is, until the same decision is implemented for RA. There is a much more interesting consequence of the Phi RA pair on the XRP Ledger's decentralized exchange. Payments can leverage the order book liquidity, the trustless token model, and the Solaris bridge to leverage cross-chain and cross-currency payments. For example, a payment originating from Phi on Songbird can be 1. Transferred to the XRP Ledger via Solaris, 2. Then, a payment can be initiated and instructed to consume Phi to RA liquidity to convert Phi into RA in the first path step. 3. 
and then be sent to a trustless issuing account in the second path step. And finally, once the transaction is verified by the state connector, the RA is available for collection by the intended recipient on FLIR. A transmitter could effectively transfer value from FLIR to Songbird and vice versa, using the XRP ledger as an intermediary without a central counterparty, making it trustless. And that's something which is really, really powerful. The ability to transfer the value from one network to another using XRP as the middleman, let's say. All of this done trustlessly. We intend to ensure that TCN, or Trustline Credit Network Governance Tokens, can be migrated from Songbird to Flur in this manner. Very powerful indeed. So let's look at the Songbird launch plan. We are preparing for a limited Songbird launch that tests the economic assumptions of our stablecoin design. There will be a limit on the amount of Songbird SGB collateral that can be used to supply or borrow FI during the first phase to mitigate potential risks. Additionally, we may require pre-registration for participation, so be on the lookout for some sort of registration form from official Trustline sources in the very near future. We want to ensure that the system design works with real value in a limited setting before completing the smart contract audits. The audits will occur when there is a consensus that FI has achieved a satisfactory level of stability. To protect the potential vulnerabilities in the unaudited code from attackers, we will take two or three major security measures, and here they are. Number one, we will keep the code base closed source until it is audited, but we will give certain trusted individuals read access to the repository on GitHub to confirm that the deployed contract binaries match the repository code and that Trustline has no direct control over probity. So let me break that down. That might sound a little bit technical for some people. So, so when you create software, it can be either open source or closed source. Open source meaning it's publicly available and anyone can see it. Now it looks like they want to restrict it to closed source with limited access to not allow any malicious developers to look inside of the source code and try to find vulnerabilities. Let's move on to number two. We may additionally require KYC or know your customer for participants until the code is open sourced, or we may open source the unaudited code and require know your customer until the audit is complete. Now, that level of security with KYC is going to allow Trustline to identify any malicious actors. Now, let's move to the third point. Now, this is a bit of a mouthful. We will create private, closed source, audited or unaudited contracts deployed and or public open source audited slash unaudited bug bounty programs. Our plan is to do both. Moving down, the first RA NFT, NFT standing for non-fungible token. With the assistance of two community members, we have created a unique NFT artwork to commemorate the inauguration of RA. The NFT represents the first RA to ever be minted and this will be automatically received by the first user to supply RA in Probity's treasury. This is a unique, one-of-a-kind experience for the winning bidder. We will release more details about how to register for this auction in a future post, so please follow our blog on Medium to be notified. And I'm going to leave a link to that below. So let's talk about Probity DAO a financial cooperative organization. Now, this is a new term for me, but it may be one to look out for for the future. Probity DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization, DAO. But it's also what we're calling an FCO, financial cooperative organization. A cooperative organization is a voluntary organization and is owned by its members. There are a lot of examples in the pre-Web3 era, such as credit unions, that clearly show that the model works. It will also allow for the Web3 era because the core idea is the same. No one person or organization owns an FCO, or Financial Cooperative Organization. 
Now, finally, we're going to wrap up here on the last paragraph about community safety. The extensive list of official Trustline Inc. channels is below. Do not fall for scam or phishing attack by communicating with fraudulent actors. Refer to the list to verify the integrity of the sources purporting to be Trustline Inc. And remember, we will never ask you for your private key, password, pin, or seed phrase. If someone is ever asking you for your private key or your seed phrase on any type of form, no matter how official they may look, I can guarantee you it is going to be a scam and you will lose some money. So please stay safe out there and verify the sources. So there is quite a lot to digest, but um, it's very exciting. This, this article basically introduces Phi and Phi is uh, very similar and akin to RA. Phi for the Songbird network, RA for the Flare network. And they're going to be able to be traded with each other on the XRP ledger because that's where they will reside. They're going to be minted trustlessly via smart contracts on either Songbird or the Flare network respectively. Trustline is one to definitely look out for in the future. And I'm gonna be digging a little bit deeper in some future videos, so stay tuned for that. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please feel free to do so. And until next time, I'm out. For mission control, we have liftoff.